This conference will now be recorded. All right, so today is Monday, January 4th, the first trading day of the new year. As always, everything that we're going to be talking about today, it's for educational purposes only, and nothing is intended as any type of investment advice. So like I said, we got a really long list. I've really had to narrow it down, but one of my favorite things that I've seen so far here is this QS. So we can see that it's just been trading very, very smooth since basically since about eight o'clock, just continuing on this uh, this downtrend, close at 84.45 um, on Thursday. And you can see it's just taking a huge, huge hit. But the one thing that I do love about it is that, like I said, just a very smooth stock. And it's really been completely an exception. It just has not been giving any of the pull-ups that it really does need to. We know the range is going to be absolutely gigantic. So what I'm going to be looking for is these prints over uh, under, uh, excuse me, over print personality. Okay, we need a big, big pull-up based off of everything else that we've seen. Keep in mind, too, that it jumping up 10 bucks real quick really isn't that much considering how much it actually fell down. So with these bid prints, the first thing we want to look at is do we have riders that came back and we do we have riders right up above right about here right in that 66 uh, area to about 6750 right there so once we come back to reality and one of the best you know the volume patterns that we see coming in right now we want to see a big bar like this that can't sustain because that's what's going to end up kicking up and giving us that trigger back towards the upside to pull up from those 65 bid prints okay figure like i see you know 70 really is the number that it should go based off of how many prints it just showed there and then figure from there we're going to be looking to take it right back down towards that 65 but five dollar move to the upside really isn't that much so i gotta i really in order to be able to short this i need to see it at least get back up to this 71st and obviously with this much room and this far away from 65 the trade is definitely going to be towards that upside going to be a number three trade because we're basically going along off of bid prints and you know but at the same time like i said they you know they need to bring this back up 70 is really the number that we need to see there now you know don't get me wrong could it just continue to tank and be an exception absolutely could we would need to see some shorter term selling coming in there but we don't see that as you can see we see 6390 we see 63 i mean really nice riders starting to come into this so i like the setup a lot i love the prints uh, that we've been seeing so far next thing going to be looking at is btbt so another one where i really do like these prints right here all right unfortunately only one print at that 25 level but i was watching it and it when it was executed i mean you're talking about really really ballsy prints as the stock was coming back up um and we just really haven't been able to move away from that 25 we know 25 is going to be a hard thing first to be able to hold so seeing those little sellers coming in afterwards definitely looking for us to come back down test you know basically that 2350 area of support and then we're going to be looking for the stock again to be able to break past uh back up past that 25. just keep in mind look at what the daily looks like this stock is very very pretty so be careful of this of a real big down day coming into this because we just haven't seen it and volume has been basically unsustainable right the volume that we've seen come into this morning in no way whatsoever is even close to what we've been seeing coming in over the past few days when we got up to 79 million okay 60 million you can see that's just a lot so Keep that in mind as we're going in because it gives us a real nice variable to look for or not to be able to, well, first of all, to bring it over 25, get people into it, but then bring it down and kind of take that breath that we could just see it has not been able to take since it's been moving. Next thing looking at is WKHS, and unfortunately, it happened already, but we'll talk about it anyway. All right, so coming into this morning, you can see these prints right here. This is what really interests me. So you jump up above 2150 really not much there whatsoever and then we get this beautiful selling burst that comes in at that 2165 level from there we can see it ends up falling but we do get the buying that comes in on the upside so not only is this shorter term selling but then you get the, the pullback that we needed from this 2150 area and then obviously you know, the stock you know showing some riders we see these sellers coming in right real ballsy 2110 216 2105 uh, but unfortunately, all those prints, it's making its move right now. So we're going to need to see something else in it. I just really, really like that setup. Unfortunately, it, you know, it, it happened already. We've been getting some really nice trading coming into the pre-market. So based off of what we see here, we definitely do need for it to come back up to 21. It's not a huge mover, but I just really liked that print setup. And that's all it comes down to. Remember, you know, even though it's, you know, only, let's say, 25, 50 cents, really, at the end of the day, very high percentages. That's what we need to follow. So it's 
Unfortunately, not as good as it was because it's kind of already in that money making mode. But just keep in mind that when we have all these sell prints, we didn't really get anything at 21. It was all in between. So we're going to need some type of controlling here to find any type of new entry. Mara, M-A-R-A. -A. So another one that I really like, some prints that came in. What did we notice today But the personality? Okay, does it look like market makers are trading today compared to last week? Are they back? Well, sure as hell looks that way because we're getting a lot of really nice stuff. So this is another really nice setup that unfortunately kind of happened as we were uh, – during the pre-market. And when I say unfortunate, that just means because I know a lot of you and a lot of people, especially beginners, aren't gonna be trading the pre-market, kind of waiting for that open. So when I say unfortunate, it's not unfortunate at all. It's doing what it's supposed to. It just kind of takes a lot of people that would be trading it kind of out of the game. So we look right here, we're at the 12 level. We have beautiful ask prints. And then what happens afterwards, okay? Immediate react, well, the, not immediate, but the reaction to it is this huge selling that comes in at this 1210 level right we keep pushing so when we keep pushing up we didn't really get anything coming in around that 1250 we had one print oh excuse me the burst right here so then we get a burst our print personality is really only about four ish and that's because of these big prints coming in so when we look at this and we get the 1250 there we know we need to pull back it continues back up we trigger down now we got to trigger down underneath 12 because we have that buying that's sitting there now we need to at least get down to 1175 at least to this orb line right here unfortunately with the amount of prints that we saw at 12 it really should be a lot a lot more of a pullback there but because it's been just such a hot stock because it's got you know a lot of trading that's coming into it because we see these you know these Burst right here, 1235, 1233. We see these off-level bursts coming in. We we don't we could expect the time frame to be a little bit quicker coming in. So another one where it, you know it really does need to pull underneath that 12 and then looking to go back up. Unfortunately, 1250 doesn't have as much as we'd like there, but you know, at the same time, it definitely does give us a high probability trade. Next thing, OCGN. So this is one where unfortunately it kind of has been very very mixed and has not been trading very well coming into the morning we've had some really big buying we've had some really big selling this is definitely towards the bottom of our side list it just happened i don't know why i have it written all the way at the top this actually should go towards our bottom but at the same time we've seen as we came down below this four level even though it's been coming down we really have still been seeing a lot of bigger buying bursts that have been coming in so really what i want to see is is it going to be able to hold that 350 level now we have no trading here there really is a gap now obviously go out there and get shares make sure that you have shares available but even though we're coming back down towards that 350 i've been seeing a lot of buying coming in during that consolidation that tells us we really do have a nice chance of being able to come back towards that upside and get a trade coming over and at least test kind of these highs right here um unfortunately it didn't test all the way to five that would have been obviously that would have been real nice if it did um, but unfortunately without that we don't really have the best of percentages so this is one of those stocks that we're gonna have to let it see kind of let it see it run a little bit then get a pullback trade that comes into it, more of a number four type trade in there and then obviously if we print bids at 350 we're gonna expect a pullback and then we could just trade it towards the downside you know that, that would just be that would end up turning it into a short but the reason i'm not sold on this stock coming and filling this gap and really being a short yet it's just because the amount of really big buying that I've been seeing. And it's not like the buying. Remember, we want two phases. So it's not like it just shows buying because that could just be covered. It shows buying and then it follows up with a more buying that comes in afterwards. So it looks almost as more of a reaction to covering buying than it is just covering in general. Next thing, BNGO. This should be a lot higher up our list. Now, obviously, there's just been... <laughs> So, 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 so much buying that's been coming into this thing. It's just absolutely unbelievable. Uh, unfortunately, I've been talking. I did not see exactly. I mean, I could look up the prints on another screen, but I did not see exactly what happened at five. Uh, but I have to take the assumption that we got a whole lot of buying, a big order coming in. Um, and being executed. Five is not going to be an easy level to be able to just get away from. One thing that it's not going to let me go all the way back to, but as we were coming up, those 494 uh, uh, prints that came in to be a GO, it was just absolutely phenomenal. We started to see refreshing from 92, 93, 94, a little bit of 96. Um, in that area, uh, uh, big buy at 99.5. Okay, yeah, I, I, I would have to assume so with that much volume pushing up into there. So, guys, we have everything we need in this stock. Unfortunately, it's sitting at the five level. We don't need to see any more buying to know that there's enough buying actually in here. 
Um, unfortunately, at this point, we do have to pull back a little bit from five. And you can see it's starting to trade more like an actual stock rather than trading a lot in these you know, consolidations. It's starting to get smoother, which is definitely a good sign of showing bigger ranges to come. All right, so overall, we do need to pull back a little bit from this five, which unfortunately right now is just pushing up at the moment because it's you know pre-market and the volume's just pumping back in. But overall, guys, um, there's enough buying in this, you know, where they're, they're definitely going to get to a point where they're getting close to not having to build anymore. All right, no, now it's because of the fact that we don't really have anything. We basically are looking for just what we would look for in any stock, following the rules. Pull back from five, trigger to the upside, and we take it from there. ANTE, oh my lord, I feel like I've been talking forever for a morning meeting. We got a lot of stuff going on out there. Now, this is towards the bottom side of our side list as well. All right, but as we were coming up to that 350, I think, yeah, right here. So we can see there wasn't really any great prints here, all right? But when we come over to the 324 and we can see 350 actually is really above what the actual print personality here is. And having these selling prints at 312 underneath, and obviously I'm talking, you're going to need shares for this. Okay. But having those 312 prints underneath there um, definitely makes me think that we need enough of a pullback. And those people telling us that we really kind of need to pull back underneath this three. So unfortunately, it looks like even though we have those prints at 350, it looks like the stock is kind of going to kind of die out. Once the market opens, we're going to see it come back towards, you know, and really kind of just, like I said, die out. Um, but just, you know, definitely going to be looking for a short coming into there. And then Hoth, H-O-T-H. So we ended up getting a push. Did we hit three? I don't think so. That would make it too easy. Nope, we didn't. But again, another one with just some huge buying that's been coming into this during this consolidation. Kind of broke out a little bit, but the fact that it didn't break past this consolidation, not a good sign at all. Although at the same time, you know, when you're getting that buying coming towards it, but we didn't really, from what I can see, doesn't look like we really got that buying as it pushed into those highs, which is not something that we ever want to see. So this is another one where it's kind of iffy. We need to see something a little bit more come in. We need some controlling prints, obviously, um, at some point. But it's another thing that, you know, kind of keep an eye on. Uh, and that makes eight. I wanted to kind of limit it to, uh, to the most potential. Now, anything else out there that I missed? And I know I have missed it. Well, it's not that I missed some things, but I know there's some things out there that aren't moving. And as if they move, then we'll, you know, we'll definitely call them out. But we have a lot going on. So let's make sure, as always, okay, when we have a smaller list, it makes things easier. It makes our choices easier. It makes what we're going to watch easier. All right. But that, now we have such a big list. It is so important to narrow it down to the best ones. All right, don't try to trade all eight stocks at the same time because what ends up happening is you're going to be looking at eight, all eight stocks moving all over the place and you never really get that feel for the one stock. So make sure, like I said, that you know you just understand that we're in a day where there's a lot of stuff that's going on and we really narrow it down. We use our rules and we use everything that we've learned to narrow it down for our best situation. So just to reiterate the schedule, we have Traders Exchange tomorrow at 1230. And then Wednesday, we will be having a silent day with a meeting at 345. All right, let's have a great start to our new, our new year. I will talk to everyone in the chat and happy trading.